Hey folks, thanks for dropping by. My name is James and today we're going to be installing a transom in this 1980s Johnson skiff that I've been working on. I'm going to add a link to part one of this video in the description, so make sure you check that out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share and hit that notification bell please. Uh, today I'm going to tell you a little bit about this product I'm using here. This is a blown PVC board. It's put out by a company called Comerling. And basically it's PVC that's made kind of like foam. So there's, there's a few tricks into using this so that you get a good bond with your fiberglass. Whether you're using polyester, vinyl ester, or uh, epoxy resin, you still wanna, wanna follow these tricks to make sure you get a good adhesion. It, it's a little trickier to bond than say products like Defenacel or uh, plywood even. A little trickier to get this PVC to stick to, or to get, get your resins to stick to this stuff than, than them. But once it's in, it's solid as a rock. It's got wonderful screw retention. I think 250 or 300 pounds of screw retention. Uh, it doesn't compress as easy as like five pound foam. This stuff's like a 25 pound density. So it's it's up there. It's a little, little denser than Kusa board would be. Sorry about the noise in the background, the trucks and stuff going by. I'm, I'm working pretty close to the road here today, so I, I want to apologize for that. So what we're going to be doing here is doubling up two layers of three-quarter inch core, binding it to the transom and getting it tied in. And then we're going to move forward. Now, I've already created what I call a stringer stack, which is where I take uh, multiple layers of Three quarter inch foam core and I bond them together and to the length that I need them to and then I shape them and when it's done I have a solid foam core stringer that I could then bond and glass into the hull. Now today we're just going to be doing a center stringer because this boat is a is a major refurb and I've still got side lockers and the old seats and stuff glass they're still part of the boat to help maintain the boat shape because we did extend this thing by three feet and it's, it's pretty important that we maintain that, that factory shape of the boat uh, so we can maintain that factory performance uh, or get better performance. We don't want to create any hooks or waves or anything like that in the hull. So we're going to leave all that in. We're going to get the transom in, the center stringer, maybe even the rear bulkhead. Not 100% sure on that yet. We'll see where we go here moving forward with this, uh, with this video, see how how things go as I'm working on the boat and where we'll get from there. But we do need to put a rear bulkhead in the boat before we can remove the re the remainder of the, the back seat and before we can move, remove the center lockers so we can put the side stringers in. Once this rear bulkhead's in, the boat isn't gonna wanna, wanna tweak or distort any and then I can start removing things. Um, rear bulkhead, we'll remove the side, the, the rear seat, the side lockers, then I'll probably go ahead and install the side stringers and the forward bulkhead in another video. Stick around, let's get to work. All right, y'all, I got my bunny suit on here. I got my respirator, my grinders, 36 grit paper. We're gonna go ahead and prep this transom. I've already worked on it a little bit, got it cleaned up, but we're gonna go ahead and finish prepping it, get it, uh, get it good and ground down. That way we get a good bite with the resin going into it. From there, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to prep this PVC board and get it bonded to the transom. So let's have some fun. One thing I wanna mention guys, when you're doing this stuff, Make, make sure your respirator fits. I, I got a little bit of facial hair going on here, but, but make sure it fits. Make sure you get a good seal. Very important. You don't want this stuff getting into your lungs.
all the grinding's done, at least for now. Again, this this board I'm using for a core is a it's a PVC or a blown PVC. It's it's a lightweight board that is uh, totally impervious to water. It's a good quality product. A four by eight sheet of this, uh, three quarter inch thick, runs about $120. So it's comparable to all, all your other Marine cores out there. Maybe even a little cheaper than some. I like it for projects like this. And, and various projects where there may be a screw or a bolt going through it. it it's got a, got a pretty high density to it, doesn't compress a lot. However, it can be tricky to work with, like I mentioned earlier. It does come from the factory. Uh, they run it through a, a big industrial belt sander, a full sheet at a time, but it's not enough. Uh, what happens is, is that after they run it through the belt sander, they, they pack it up in boxes and then they ship it all across the country. The pieces of core are rubbing back and forth on one another like this. So any of that, uh, any of that bite they created initially by running it through the sander, at least half of it's gone. So the first thing I like to do, I like to give it a quick wipe with some acetone, just to make sure there's not any grease or oils on it. And then I'll run over it with either my grinder or a belt sander with 36 grit. If you're using a grinder though, you, you wanna go light. If you start digging into it, you're gonna create valleys and, and just really tear the stuff up. You just wanna really skim over it um, just, to, just to create some more bite. Once I do that, I wipe it down with some styrene. I've already done these, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. I just wet my rag, get my rag a little damp there. And then I'll either start in the middle or I'll start on one edge. Um, and I go from the middle out or from one edge all the way. Just like that. And then I'll turn my rag. Again, I've already done this, but I'll turn my rag, I'll wet it again, and I'll go the other way. And I might do that a couple of times. And let that styrene just kind of sit on there for a minute and it it melts into this PVC sort of like a uh, adhesion promoter for a plastic adhesion yeah sort of like a plastic adhesion promoter for uh, different auto body paints and stuff like that that you can pick up it just really helps the the resin bite into this stuff a lot better um, if you prep it right it's not gonna fail you though so you've got nothing to worry about there might notice my fancy rag. And here's my money saving tip of the day. Don't go to the paint supply store, don't go to the big box stores and buy a bunch of rags to do a project like this. Uh, save that for, for paint projects where, where you need a good clean lint-free cloth. Go to your local thrift stores. A lot of them have fill a bag for a dollar or fill a bag for two dollar deals. Sort through, find your cotton t-shirts, your white, especially white ones. Uh, light grays work too. Find them, bring them home, throw them in the washing machine with a little bit of Dawn dish detergent, wash them two or three times that way, then run them through and rinse them again. Don't put them in the dryer. Chances are uh, you, you've ran dryer sheets through there, your wife's ran dryer sheets through there, your, your kids have, and they leave a film on things. So you don't want to run them through the dryer. Hang them on the line, hang them over a uh, a, a, a railing, a hand railing, something like that, so they can dry naturally. Throw them in a plastic bag, and then you've got a got a pile of shop rags that costs you a couple of dollars. Throw them in the garbage when you're done. So we're all prepped up here. I just want to kind of dry fit this again, make sure I'm going the right way. All right. Now we're going to mix our putty. Again. Um, another money saving tip, cottage cheese containers, sour cream containers, peanut butter containers, anything like that you can use. If you've got a project coming up, save it, wash it out really good, hold on to it, put it in the shop. Uh, it'll save you a small fortune at the end of a, a big project like this and, and mixing cups. I've been doing this for, for over 20 years like this and I 
can't even imagine how much money I've saved on stupid things like mixing cups. So I've already pre-measured my catalyst. I'm putting about uh, about 20 cc's of catalyst in here, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. Bad stuff, don't get it on you, don't get it in your eyes. So we wanna mix it in here. We wanna mix this very thoroughly. Set this off to the side so I don't spill any of it. We wanna mix it very thoroughly. Scrape the sides of the container, dig down to the bottom. And we're gonna scrape it for, or, or scrape it. We're gonna mix it for about 60 seconds, nonstop. Get it all mixed up. Again, this is just a, a bonding putty that I use. Um, there's no, I don't use a real formula to get this where it's at. I do use uh, fume silica. Uh, you can purchase it as Cabasil. You can purchase it as Aerosil. West Systems has their brand. However, it's pretty pricey, um, as is all things West System. They do have a good product. So, you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. But I go through so much of this stuff that I buy it in bulk. I buy it in... 25 pound boxes or 50 pound boxes which is a 50 pound box of fume silica is going to be about a three by three by three cube so it takes quite a bit of it to get that weight uh, if you're doing a project like this one a total refurb i would purchase about 10 pounds of it i also for for this type of work for this structural stuff I like to mix in some quarter inch milled fibers, like I said, and what that does is it keeps you from having essentially just a layer of putty back here. You've created a, almost like a, a layer of fiberglass in there. These little fibers help to hold the putty together and strengthen it and keep it from cracking and, and busting apart. You don't, don't want that to happen. Chances are it's things like that that are the reason you're you're working on the boat anyway so might as well do it right the first time So we got some more resin mixed up here, just, just neat resin, if you will. All right, so we got some neat resin here. And by neat resin, I mean this resin hasn't been altered with fillers or, or glass fibers or anything like that. We've got a single layer of ounce and a half chop strand mat. We're gonna go ahead and get that wetted out and get this other piece of core put on the inside get the clamps on and we'll come back tomorrow and get started on the stringer. All right folks so I'm just mixing up some neat resin here. By neat resin I mean it doesn't have any fillers or additives put into it other than the MEK or the hardener catalyst. Uh, no, no fibers, no no fume silica, no glass bubbles, nothing like that. We want it neat. We want it to wet out this layer of ounce and a half drop strand mat. There's no need to have any of that in here. The fibers will reinforce this. We'll get this on, get this glass wetted out, get the core on and clamped, and we'll come back tomorrow and start the process of putting the stringer in.
So one thing that's very important, guys, when you're when you're doing this, you, I know I said it once, I'll say it every video I do. Mix, mix this stuff really well. Uh, scrape your side, scrape the bottom. Just keep constantly mixing it. Mix, mix it about, you know, usually you can get away with about 60 seconds if you're mixing it good and concentrating on scraping the side. Scrape, scrape your stick. It's even more critical with the epoxy resins. Polyester, not as much. But with epoxies, it's, it's critical that you get, get it mixed in good. So one tip you can do here, you don't have to, but it, it will help you. Put a little resin on your board. I usually like to wet the, the front side of the backboard anyway. It makes wetting out the glass a lot easier, it makes it go faster, it makes the glass stick. while you're wetting it out instead of falling down on you all the time and causing you a lot of trouble. Now, if I was doing any more than this, I would have my respirator on or if I was in an enclosed building, but I'm out here in the open, it's well ventilated and uh, got a little bit of a breeze blowing. So I'm not too, too concerned with the vapors. But again, if I was if I was in a building or if I was doing a using any more resin than what I'm using here, I would certainly have a respirator on my face at this time. An organic vapor respirator, not just a, a paper element one. Now you guys see what I did there? I started at the top. That's a rookie mistake. Don't start at the top, start at the bottom. Now I gotta lean over this resin to wet out the bottom. This is not a case where more is better. You want the right amount of resin, not more, not too much. Too much resin is going to create a brittle, weak structure, and it's going to waste material. It's not enough. You're going to have dry spots in your in your lamination. You don't want that either. I'll be sharing a calculator with you folks, or. Uh, I don't know that it's a calculator, but it's, it's a uh, a chart that will help with 
resin to fiber ratios, you know, how much how much resin you need to wet out certain amounts of fiber. So we'll have that coming up soon. These are just some pieces of angle aluminum that I have. They're kind of tricky to get in here sometimes, but but they really do a good job of supporting these, these clamps for me and spreading the load. Clamping didn't go that well for me. It usually does. Had a couple clamps that were stuck. And I, I honestly, I should have checked them all full throw on the screws before I, I, I mixed the first drop of resin here. Uh, bad on me. But I ended up saving it. I grabbed some screws, just some exterior uh, decking screws, and I ran them through the back of the skin through this core, that's one of the beauties about this core, again, being being a high density core and having that screw retention, I was able to use those screws to pull the pull the core into the putty and into the, the chop strand mat. So this work is saved, was an idea, I had to do a little hustle there for a minute, but we'll be able to move forward now once this, this glass all kicks off. We'll get the side shaped down, get everything filleted in, and we'll put our structural mat over the top. I'm going to show you another trick, that same rag you used to, to wipe your board off with. Again, very cheap rags. Very cheap. Anytime you're doing a transom and you're clamping parts like this and there's resins involved, you're going to have some squeeze out. It's better to wipe it up or mop it up now than it is to wait till tomorrow and have to run a grinder through it and get it all off. Take that, that next to free rag you got and wipe up that stuff. Wipe it up now or you're going to spend hours grinding on it tomorrow and that ain't no fun. Now, typically what I'll do with this is set it in a bucket or on some paper, something like that. There's not much in here. I'll let it kick off. I'll throw it right in the garbage can. You're done. Uh, Took, took me two seconds to wipe this up and again you got to grind this stuff tomorrow you're looking in 20 30 minutes extra work plus all that grinding nobody likes to grind well this video went a little long i apologize for that for those of you that stuck around thanks for hanging with me today thanks for uh watching this one to the end i know it was uh kind of brutal but uh, I think moving forward, what we're going to do is I'm going to save the, the how-tos and the tutorials for, for its own series. And I'll be working on these boats while I'm doing those how-tos, but I'm not going to give you the play-by-play -play on, on each boat as, as we go along. And I'll save the, the build videos for, for their own, own series of, of different builds and stuff. That, that way these build videos are... A little shorter for you, a little, little uh, easier to watch. Not so much my gabbing. But uh, again, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you guys. Um, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, comment for me. Uh, hit the little notification bell so you know when I upload again. And um, don't forget to share this, please. Got a lot of useful information coming your way. And thank you very much. Have a blessed day.